are never truly silent. They linger, waiting for the right moment to seize the living and drag them into the abyss of terror. This was a lesson I learned all too well when I moved into an old apartment on the third floor of a Discane building. The moment I set foot in the hallway, an eerie sensation crawled up my spine. The air was thick with an inexplicable heaviness and an oppressive silence engulfed me. But, desperate for affordable housing in the city, I shrugged off my unease and continued to the apartment's door. The moment I stepped inside, a chilling gust of wind swept through the rooms, causing the candles on the windowsills to flicker violently. I felt like an intruder in a space that belonged to someone else, something else. Despite the unsettling atmosphere, I couldn't turn away from the opportunity for a new beginning. As days turned into nights, peculiar occurrences became a regular event. Objects moved on their own, strange whispers resonated from empty corners, and a feeling of being watched never left my side. Sleep eluded me as haunting nightmares plagued my mind. One evening as I returned from work, I noticed a peculiar symbol etched onto the apartment door. It seemed like a twisted amalgamation of symbols from ancient grimoires. Ignoring the unease, I entered and found a small notebook left behind by a previous tenant, or perhaps a warning from beyond the grave. In the diary, the previous occupant described chilling encounters with malevolent entities. They had attempted to perform a ritual to free themselves from the apartment's sinister grip, but it only worsened the haunting. Reading these accounts sent shivers down my spine, and I couldn't help but feel that I was falling into the same trap. The nightmares intensified, and I started seeing glimpses of shadowy figures lurking in the corners of my vision. Desperation pushed me to seek help from a local historian who revealed the apartment's unsettling history. Decades ago, a cult conducted unholy rituals in the building, invoking dark forces that still roamed the halls. The ritual had claimed the lives of several innocent souls whose spirits were now trapped in eternal torment. Armed with this knowledge, I sought the help of a paranormal investigator, Professor Eleanor Blackwood. She was renowned for her expertise in handling malevolent entities. As we delved deeper into the apartment's dark past, the spirits grew more agitated. Professor Blackwood conducted a seance to make contact with the trapped souls. Her presence seemed to agitate the spirits, and they lashed out violently. In a room filled with flickering candles and choking incense, the investigator's voice was drowned out by guttural moans and blood-curdling screams. Suddenly, the symbols on the apartment door began to glow with an ominous light. A vortex of darkness materialized in the center of the room, pulling objects and furniture toward its malevolent embrace. The professor urged me to leave, but fear kept me rooted to the spot. It was then that a faint voice called out to me from the depths of the void. It was a voice filled with anguish and despair, begging for a release from the torment. As the voice grew louder, my resolve wavered torn between compassion and self-preservation. In a moment of recklessness, I reached out to the vortex and my hand was pulled into the abyss. The pain was unbearable, as if my very soul was being torn apart. With the professor's help, I managed to break free from the entity's grasp, but the ordeal left me scarred, both mentally and physically. In the end, Professor Blackwood managed to seal the vortex, but the malevolent spirits of the apartment were not banished entirely. They retreated to the shadows, waiting for another chance to exact their vengeance. I moved out of that cursed apartment, but I, I still hear their haunting whispers in the silence of the night. I can never escape the memory of that terrifying encounter, and I know that the echoes of the past will continue to follow me, no matter where I go. Some horrors are never truly left behind. They stay with you, etched into your very soul.